Ball, touch gloves. Good luck, lads. Howard Foster, one of the best referees coming through on the scene at the moment in charge of this one. Well, is the ambition, the motivation still there for Richard Williams? There have been a lot of injuries and mystery illnesses along the way for him. And he's been out of the ring for quite a while now, since last June, when he had that shock defeat against Sergio Martinez, one of only two on his record. He's in the red trunks here. Richard Williams, the man who used to deliver meals on wheels to the elderly. Great guy, but uh, if he's going to break through into world class, it had better be soon, and he really does need a win tonight. How good is this extrovert Ghanaian from the tough Bukom area of Accra in Ghana, which produced Azuma Nelson and Ike Quarte, among others, two of the great fighters of the modern era. Well, uh, the first thing I notice about Powell is he doesn't sh change expression when he's about to throw a punch. Doesn't telegraph anything. The jab come out nice and quickly of its own accord. There comes the right hand. So who knows? Might be half decent. We just don't know. He is, uh, I know it's a cliche, but he is a mystery man. Even to Williams. Who has to be nice and sharp here tonight. He's had some good wins in his time, notably the fourth round stoppage of the formerly world-class Australian, Shannon Taylor. Well, Williams is a good defence up close, he, he blocks punches as opposed to slipping and stepping back from them, and I think that might stand him in good stead here, because this fellow's throwing a quick right hand, and uh, Williams will want to be blocking some of those, uh, blocking all of those actually. Powers looking big and strong for a light middleweight. Never been stopped in his 12 contests so far and gets him with the right hand there. He is coming off a defeat in a Ghanaian title fight last time against Osumanu Adama. Went the full 12 rounds, that one, so he can do the distance all right. His other defeat was against Joshua Clotty, points 10. And he's a decent fighter too. Don't get many bad fighters from Ghana, you tend to notice. And again, he lands with that right hand. Yep, that seems to be the danger punch. He's quite prepared to lead with the, with the right hand, uh, which can catch you napping. But as I say, chin down, nice tight defence, Williams. That's nice little way he does business. Had the reputation of being a real puncher, Williams on his way up, but uh, more recent fights have tended to go longer distances. One against Paul Samuels, he stopped him in the 10th in the rematch. 12 rounds against Pestraev, 12 against Martinez. So that was Williams again, blocking the punch and still in the position to come back with counters. I think he's going to be doing quite a bit of that tonight. Just block the shots, stay in range and come back with the counters. Good body shots from Williams too. I think it's much more accurate in the first round than Powers. And a good body attack to end the round from Richard Williams. <laughs> Trainer Don Davis with John Simpson, cut man Mick Williamson in the corner for Richard Williams. I remember when he beat Tony Badea, almost coming from nowhere to become Commonwealth champion for the first time. And everybody was absolutely raving about his performance that night. We thought, this guy is going to be something special, but he hasn't ever quite worked out that way. He's had a couple of real top-class performances. I thought his second fight with Paul Samuels was tremendous. I thought that was world-class. I'm not saying Paul Samuels is world-class, but that was a world-class performance. But it, it doesn't string too many performances like that together. I think that's the problem. He has to learn to string them together. At 32, I don't know if he's going to change now. Right hand, and then the left hand from I was just unbalanced a little bit there, Williams. Yeah, he actually, actually blocked the shot, but the, the strength of the punch seemed to knock him off balance. Okay. Definitely classier shots coming from Williams. And he does have class. Sometimes class to burn. But remember one of our top light middleweights, Takalu, came unstuck last week. In fact, it's been a recurring trend among the British light middleweights over the last couple of years. And he has to hope, Williams, that his future isn't behind him. Well, Power's not intimidated by anything that Williams did in that little exchange.
again he ended it with one of those right hands to the temple. It seems to be a favourite punch of the Ghanaian. Telegraphs it a bit, but he's had some success with it. Williams most effective to the body. He's not as compact as Williams. Williams is nice and tight with the chin down out of harm's way. Nice punch and nice uppercut from Williams. Definitely the, the classier shots coming from Williams. Williams has been Commonwealth champion, IBO champion, WBF champion. But you'd like to see him become something like European champion or a version or of one of the genuine world titles. That's where he should be aiming, I think. I wonder if the light middleweight division is going to go down in history as the division where nobody fought each other. Well, I mean, like, at one time we had three people calling themselves a world champion, a European champion, and nobody ever fought anybody, and they all get beat elsewhere. And British boxing was the loser, yeah. Takalu, Williams, Barnard, Alexander, Roberts, all had setbacks. We did see Takalu and Farn out, but nothing else among them. Ridiculous. I wonder if Williams is happy up close because Powers throws them a little bit wide. He throws long punches and maybe he feels safer up close and uh, maybe stronger. But I wonder if he's going to change tactics or stick with this. This is a fair taste for setting. Covers that well, quite powers, but all the time Williams is finding him with some quality punches to the body into the rib cage with right and left hand all the time. There's no question uh, Williams means business tonight that this is a, a positive start to the, to the fight for him. Just staying right in range, letting the punches go. He says he's a better fighter now than he's ever been. He knows more. Good body punching tonight from him. on this British scene. Takalu on our rankings has gone right down to number eight after his defeat against Eugenio Montero last week. No good him saying he was ill afterwards as he's been telling everybody. All the fighters say that and my answer to that is if he were ill don't go in the ring. I'm actually wondering if there's a virus going around that just attacks boxers because everybody who's been beaten recently seems to decide they had a virus afterwards. Yeah, obviously is the case. This Steve Roberts, who has retired now, and uh, made some decent money along the way with Matchroom. We wish him a happy retirement. Seems to be enjoying himself tonight, Steve. Yeah, he deserves to. And I think I'll say about Williams Ian, when he lost last time out, didn't make any excuses. I thought he wasn't looking himself that night, but he didn't make any excuses, so that was refreshing. He has had trouble with illness along the way, They're particularly around the time of that Hussein Osman fight when they flew him up on the night, Osman, and he did pretty well. Good body shot again from Williams, who looks very composed in there and mellow and quite rounded. He takes a right hand, but he takes it, says he loves boxing, still in love with the sport. Two people who saw him in some of his early sparring sessions for this fight weren't too impressed. They thought he just looked was a bit subdued and jaded looking, but I think he's uh, put the polish on the preparations okay in the last fortnight or so. He's looking quite good here tonight. Yeah, but in the first couple of rounds, it, he was forcing Powers to throw punches. He was staying right in front of him, covering up, forcing him to maybe try to take some of the steam out of him. The big fella, he looks massive for a light middleweight. I'm amazed that he does have some weight troubles. That was a nice punch. It really was. And I'm feeling that that travelled right through to the boots of Powers. Not too many refinements about Aite Powers, but he's obviously a brawny, strong type. Seems to relish the battle. Grew up idolising the professor Azuma Nelson. I think he was only about six when Azuma first became a world champion. Well, I think staying close to Powers and pushing them back are the right tactics. They're working well. It means Williams has taken a few chances, but again, the defence and the chin down that I keep talking about coming to no harm so far. Just systematically 
trying to discourage his man, outclass him, break him down, discourage him. Still dangerous with those right hands from time to time, though. Powers. It's not something that Williams can go to sleep on. That he's had a bit too much success with that right as well. I think eventually Williams will stand off and give himself a bit more room. Ooh. I think this fellow will be no, wild, no. but that certainly was low. Way, way low. This fellow throws them wide, so at long range you would imagine he would make a lot of mistakes and could be picked off. But uh, so far, Williams happy to stay close. Williams in control of things at the moment. Powers looking sporadically dangerous. Yep, he's landed a couple of good right hands, one or two kind of swinging left hooks, but uh, again, the quality stuff coming from Williams, but uh, wouldn't quite say he's got everything under control yet, but uh, good start. Welcome back to the York Hall, Bethnal Green. Richard Williams has landed 30 body punches so far, to just six by Aite Powers, and here are just some of them. Well, uh, Williams was saying he didn't know much about Powers, but I can tell you one thing, he's come into this fight with a Wait fight a plan, and he's stuck to it, he's thinking about the body shots early, take some of the steam out of this fellow, and no doubt we'll see a change in the tactics the fight was on. Yeah, fourth round, Williams was saying in the dressing room, didn't know anything about this guy, I think uh, it might have been kidding us a bit, I think they've done their homework. Because there's a, a real strategy, isn't there? Yeah, definitely. I mean, he may not have known what Powers was going to do, but he knew exactly what he was going to be doing. Again, a bit low with the left hand. I know he's from South London, but he's pushing it a bit. Powers comes back with those heavy-looking right hands of his. They travel a long way, and... Williams will have to be careful to get his left glove up to block those. This is a sustained attack from the Ghanaian. See, I think the difference at the moment, uh, Powers is punching on the way in. He's not waiting till he gets up close and tied up. He's punching as he comes forward. That's giving Williams a couple of problems. Good right out the gun in there. Classy work that time from Williams, a smile through the gum shield from this uh, Ghanaian who arrived in the ring with a breakdown tonight, obviously not phased by the occasion in any way, why would he be really? I think he's pretty much been holding his own in this round so far, a good start for the round from Powers, Williams getting down to work now, things fairly level at this stage in the round. Has to be careful here that he doesn't get outlasted. That's some good work in the fight, but this is a pretty good uh, response here from the Ghanaian, who still looks strong. Good left hook, lovely punch that from Williams. Found the gap expertly. Rock Powers almost lifted him momentarily off his feet. You can see the difference in class uh, when Williams really gets the rock. Beautiful punch. Oh, he's hurt him with that left hook to the body. He's grimacing through the pain and sucking it up, Powers. But I thought he was going to go for a moment there, Jim. I think it was in his mind maybe to touch down there just to catch his breath. But uh, still doesn't look intimidated. But that was a beautiful body shot. That knocked a lot out of Powers, and they're beginning to sicken him, these body punches now. His rib cage will be aching from these. And Williams is piling on the pain for him and hits him with a straight right. That was a breakthrough round, I think, for Williams. He got to Powers in a big way in the fourth. He's hurt, Jim. Yep. That was a tremendous shot, he did very, very well to stay upright then. And it was a beautiful punch, that you can see the hips, a good, good left hook earlier in the round. 
and then you can just see the way he dipped, sat himself down, boom, beautiful punch, bang on the rib cage, and you can't toughen up the rib cage. You can, you can take those punches in the front of the stomach all night long, but in the rib cage, that took every bit of wind away from Powers. Full credit that he didn't touch down and take a count. Bang, that's a beauty. You can see the, the reaction there. Still looking back at Williams, this, this fellow's tough and he's brave, but I think at this point he was thinking of going over. He almost did touch down, he thought about it, but his pride kept it there. But uh, you're right, and that knocked everything out of him for a few seconds. Fifth round, Richard Williams, red trunks. And there is a classy veneer about this man, which leaves you frustrated that he hasn't gone on to mix it with the top names in the light middleweight division, or at least people around the fringes of it. Maybe somebody like Javier Castillejo. This is good again from Williams. He knows that he's weakened powers in that last round, and he's putting it all in here. It's a bewildering array of shots. The repertoire's good, and all the Garvean can do is cover up. He better throw something back soon. Otherwise, the referee is going to think about the stoppage. See Williams controlling the pace he's working at. He's staying close, not wasting any movements, not wasting any punches. It's a real professional job here. He's boxing beautifully at the moment, even defensively. Getting his gloves up, blocking shots, picking the punches expertly. It was a really impressive start to the round. I mean, in this kind of form, you have to fancy a return with Martinez. This is more like the, the real Richard Williams. Martinez, of course, did go on to destroy Adrian Stone. OK, a faded Adrian Stone, but there's another big win, and he's hurt him again with that right hand there. And remember, Williams did have Martinez down twice in that fight that he lost. It's noticeable that Power's defences have been scattered now. That's a sign of tiredness, as well as maybe losing hope a little bit. I think that body shot has taken an awful lot out of him. Look, at he's so loose now, his defences have almost gone. Williams could move right in here. Yeah, I think the needle is beginning to flicker towards empty. The powers here. More left to the body. Watch the head, says the referee. Williams looks rounded. He's waiting and picking the punches. He's not just throwing any shot. Good defensive work as well. Powers is wild by comparison. And Powers doesn't have the option to, to change tactics. Another fighter would start moving around the ring. Try to take get the action at long range, but I don't think Powers has the experience to do that. So Williams really having things all his own way, controlling the action. He's in with a rough, raw, strong, wild type in this Ghanaian tonight. The sort of guy that if Williams was off form or losing his way or fading, he might have had a lot of trouble with, but at the moment, I stress at the moment, he's boxed with cool class. It's just so good to watch uh, yeah. a man good at his job. Back to form, Richard Williams. This is what the computer says so far. Williams has landed 127 punches, a lot more than Powers. I think the difference in body shots uh, is we're telling a new picture here. Because he's taken all the steam out of this fella. I think it was 51 punches to eight to the body. Here comes round six. Williams will fancy perhaps that he's softened this fellow up enough that he can think about getting him out of there. This is a massive fight in Richard Williams' career. And he takes a little break. Powers almost like he's leaning on a lamppost on the corner of the street. That was another good body shot that he took for his troubles. And Williams, nothing impresses him, just concentrating on the job, not phased the, the behaviour or the antics of this fellow. He's had to, of course, live with the stories of the 
up-and-coming talents of Jamie Moore. The British until recently, Commonwealth champion as well. Moore, the big improver in this division in recent times. Be a really good fight, wouldn't it? Williams and Moore. Unlikely to happen, I, I would wonder think, if it's going to happen, being yeah. that uh, Moore has handed in the title. It'd be a silly move giving your title away and then challenging back for it. Well, if the money was OK. Yeah, well, I suppose that's the bottom line, but uh, better being a defending champion than a challenger. We'd like to see the fight, though, wouldn't we? No, I don't. Will it be for Moore's British and Williams' his Commonwealth title, wouldn't it? Yep, I still feel it would be strange giving a title up and fighting for it again. I just don't yeah. see the logic there. Well, there's a lot of logic to it. A lot of, lot of, a lot of things that go on now, Jim. Well, Powers is trying to change things around the first half minute or so. He was trying to keep it a long range. That didn't work now. He was trying to, to push Williams back. That hasn't worked either, so we're back seeing what we've been seeing up to now. Williams and top pushing this fellow back. And again, looking for angles for those hooks to the body. Right, step back. One step back, straight away. Straight away. There's more head ta target now for Williams because this fellow's tiring, his defences are not as tight as they were, so we'll probably see some good head hooks coming home now. Tries to come forward again, but there's not much repertoire, it's all pretty predictable what Powers is doing. He's looking for haymakers in the main, but he's having some success with those right hands. Williams still has to be careful of that. Well, William just wants to, to keep this going for another couple of rounds. I have him well in front. So he doesn't want to start slacking now. Just keep doing as he's doing. Then maybe if he feels like it, he can coast in the later rounds. Remember, nobody's stopped this Ghanaian yet. Though he has only had the 12 fights before tonight. So far, so good tonight for Richard Williams. There's Jamie Moore, the British light middleweight champion. We don't know whether he really wanted to give up the Commonwealth title, oh, but uh, it's an in-camp arrangement, really, that's allowed yeah, Williams to fight one. for it here. Usually you give up a title to go into bigger, Seven better nine. things. Uh, <laughs> not, not for no reason whatsoever, it's a strange one. Yes, um, I'm old-fashioned enough to think that titles should be won and lost in the boxing ring. Give you that, yep. Here's the seventh. Now Williams is trying to win one here. A vacant now, Commonwealth 11 stone title, previously held by the likes of Morris Hope, Harold Graham, Chris Pyatt, and late in his career, Lloyd Hunnigan. That was after his excellent reign as a world welterweight champion. Well, Powers tried a couple of different things in the previous round, so at least he has uh, maybe something up his sleeve. Nothing really worked, but at least he had the, the good sense to try something different. But still, uh, Williams coming forward. See whether Williams can sustain the excellence of his performance. He's looking the best 11 stoner in the country at the moment, although I'm sure Moore would argue. Well, I always felt that Williams at his best was the best 11 stoner in the country. I felt that for the last couple of years. But then you start rethinking again. I mean, but boxing is such a cruel game. One defeat, then you start reassessing a, a man's complete life, his complete career. But uh, an off night, but uh, this is certainly back to top class stuff again from Williams. Mickey Duff always used to say, didn't he, that the, uh, the ladders were short and the snakes were long in North Boxing. Well, that just sums boxing up. I mean, there's no other sport where a defeat suddenly your whole life and your whole career is under the, the microscope. It's an amazing game, so cruel. Yep, there is the pressure, not only to keep on winning, but to look pretty good doing it as well, if you want the big opportunities. Not quite so accurate at the moment, Williams. Yeah, little drop in pace. Just about to say that, you know, a little drop in pace as well, but uh, still not taking too much, which is the main thing. But uh, 
standing off slightly, which is allowing Powers to get some punches off. And there were some stories before that last defeat of him having some weight problems, Richard Williams. He's always uh, made 11 stone pretty easy most of his career, despite a bit of a passion for junk food in his early days. But the, but the last time he boxed in, if you remember, the, the bout was switched onto a different show and he actually boxed it a week earlier than he should have done, so maybe he had to drag some weight down. Maybe the extra week to get the weight off would have made a difference, I don't know, but he definitely looked something wrong that night, but there's nothing wrong here. Well, here three punch combination. Powers, he's going to get stopped here. He's rescued, it's over. Richard Williams is back, back in form and back as Commonwealth light middleweight champion. Great finish too. Three-punch combination, and suddenly Powers was out of the fight as quick as you could say, well, Richard Williams. Yep, well, that was uh, class and quality from start to finish, did everything right. He decided what kind of fight it was going to be. He decided on his tactics before the, the first bell, stuck with them because they were working so well. We saw every aspect of the game from Richard Williams tonight, first class done it in the seventh round here I think he set it all up with a body shot and then he let three big shots go to an exposed head and uh, the referee perfect stoppage by Howard yeah, Foster definitely yeah definitely I mean it's uh, let me just see the finish now but he was grinding them down every round the body shots were working stuck was there another body shot just to take a little bit of steam he had left and nothing coming back, head stationary and at this stage in the fight if the head's moving around and there's a chance you can let it go but look at this, head being rolled back with the punches time to move in see that was in slow motion which makes the punches look a bit less snappy than they actually yeah. were, at life speed those were three clattering headshots yeah but when you see defenses are scattered they, he's looking straight back at Williams but the punches are coming straight through between his gloves so no defense whatsoever you can see there the referee picked the perfect time and the referee as we he knows the same as us that uh, Williams is well in control winning the fight clearly I think that was his best performance since going back to the around the time when he beat Shannon Taylor yeah, probably so, but would have, I suppose we'd have to compare opponents uh, to, to decide whether or not it was his best performance. But uh, he certainly dominated the action all the way through. Wonderful performance, couldn't fault it. I think everybody would like to see him fight Jamie Moore now, possibly, or even move up to fight for the European title held by Roman Karmazin. There's an idea, but he's won well tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, timekeeper... Michael McCann has recorded a time of 2 minutes 54 seconds of the 7th round. Referee Howard Foster has stopped this contest. Powers in no position to continue. Your winner and the new Commonwealth Light Middleweight Champion from Stockwell, South London, it's Richard William. And show your appreciation please for a very game challenge.